John Legend, wow. I'm Shamia Fagan. I'm the Secretary of State here in Oregon. It's great to see you. And it's great to have you take an interest in the work that's happening here in Oregon to expand and protect the right to vote and to encourage all citizens to use that right. Why have you made it a priority to be involved in this work here in Oregon? Well, Shamia, what happens in Oregon matters. Uh, they say states are the laboratories of democracy in our federal system. Uh, and what is happening in Oregon is going to make a difference. So that's why I'm glad to be working with Next Up and with the Oregon Justice Resource Center to really uh, speak out on these issues. What happens in Oregon doesn't just matter in your state, but across the country. We're seeing more places start to look at the issue of the right to vote for citizens who are incarcerated. And we're seeing some positive changes happening. For example, Washington, D.C. has already passed this law. They restored the right to vote to incarcerated people last year. That meant people from D.C. who were in prison got to take part in the elections last November, which was a big deal for them, and it was a big deal for our democracy. Now we also have states like Oregon looking at doing the same thing, which, as you know, is something that your legislators in your state are actively working on with Senate Bill 571. So there's an energy and there's a movement happening around restoring the right to vote for people in prison, and I wanted to add my support to that. If Oregon can get this done, that will send a very powerful message around the country that change is not just possible, it's actually happening. Other states can look to Oregon as a leader, as Oregon has often been on voting rights issues, because I know you are one of the best ranked states when it comes to protecting the right to vote. And at the same time, of course, we also know that there are state legislators and governors around the country trying to restrict the right to vote. And I think folks who believe that voting rights are fundamental and they're fundamental to being a citizen in this country, uh, those of us who believe that have to be on the offensive saying, we're going to go out and not only defend the folks that are already voting, but go on the offensive and say, more people need to vote. We need to expand the franchise to every adult citizen in this country. John, I know that addressing the, the devastating impacts that mass incarceration is having on our communities, especially our black, indigenous, and communities of color, is important to you. How does restoring the right to vote to people in prison here in Oregon connect to the other work that you're doing? Well, when we deny people in prison the right to vote, we are essentially saying your voice doesn't matter. We don't need to hear from you. You don't have anything to contribute. And that's wrong in my view. Even if they've done something wrong, people in prison have something to say and they have a unique perspective that all of us need to hear. They're still engaged with what's going on in the wider community through their families, through their loved ones outside, but they're also directly, profoundly impacted by decisions made by political leaders, maybe more so than most of us, since so much of their lives in prison are controlled by the state, controlled by the people running the prison, controlled by their elected officials. So we, we need to make sure they have a voice in choosing them. And additionally, the record is very clear that excluding incarcerated people's voices was a deliberate part of trying to silence the voices of people of color in general. It's an outgrowth of all the other Jim Crow restrictions that said, we want to not be picked by our voters, we want to pick the voters that we want to vote. And so you can see that history in Oregon where from the foundation of the state, it was created, literally created to be a white man state that would give privileges and opportunities to white people and white men in particular and deny those privileges and opportunities to people of color. So restoring the right to vote is giving people a say in our democracy. It's making sure their voices are heard, even if they're in prison. And it's also saying we reject that legacy of Jim Crow that said we want to pick our voters, we want to exclude certain communities from voting. Well, here's the core question, John. Why do you believe it's so important for Oregon to restore the right to vote to its incarcerated citizens? Well, one reason why is because it sends a strong message that, that's really close to my heart, which is that our most cherished rights cannot and should not be taken away from us. 
There's no basis for removing the right to vote from people in prison in terms of it somehow being a deterrent, increasing public safety, or helping achieve any of the other goals that the prison system is supposed to try to do. But there are sound reasons to believe that there's actually a practical benefit in having the right to vote be something that incarceration won't take away from you. Making it a true right, not a privilege. People will know that they always have that right and then it's protected, almost like it's a sacred thing. There won't be the confusion that we often see now where people don't have a good understanding of whether they can vote once they've been released uh, because we have this patchwork of different rules and restrictions around the country. If we had that consistency for people that no matter what you've done, prison time does not take away your right to vote no matter what. We'd see people more confident. We'd see them better informed as voters to participate both during and after incarceration. And again, voting should be a fundamental right, not a privilege that you earn by being the best citizen, by not making mistakes. It's a right you earn just by being a citizen. All right, final question. What is your message to Oregonians, John Legend to Oregonians, about what they can do to ensure voting rights are restored to incarcerated people in Oregon? Well, I would urge everyone in Oregon who believes in the power and the promise of our democracy to get loud, make your voice heard. Make sure that your representatives in the Oregon legislature who are going to be making a decision on Senate Bill 571, make sure they hear from you, make sure they know that this is important to you. You can have an impact on this issue. The more people that lawmakers hear from, the more they will understand that this is a priority and something that Oregon needs to take seriously. And Oregon has this opportunity to be a leader nationwide. But even more importantly, Oregon can send a message to its own residents, including the incarcerated ones, that we are stronger when we all have a voice, when we all listen to each other, when we all have a say in our democracy. Our votes are the foundation on which we build toward the changes we want to see in our society. Making sure that everyone gets to participate is about making sure we are moving in the direction that means progress for our communities. That's what passing this bill can mean to Oregon, and that's why I encourage every Oregonian to let their legislators know that you want Senate Bill 571 to pass. Thank you so much, Mia.